Yo, 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 what's going on? It's Terrell Hall of Fame, D-Line, uh, TBKC, and these are Bully Rants. This one is especially for Mr. Lamar Jackson. He actually hit me up on, I think, the D-Line uh, Facebook page and asked me, what would I change? And I could not answer that in a regular typing post because I didn't want to do a uh, do a book. But he said, if I could start all over, what would I change about my program? Let me put that up. Y'all get to see my ashy knuckles. But I... Uh, <laughs> But I, um, what would I change about my program? If I would change anything, and it, it it would be very contradictory to what I'm known for, is uh, I would want my dogs bigger, and that's the direction that I went in now. Uh, Hall of Fame kennels gain popularity for our pockets, and we still want pockets, but we want pockets more on the original size of the pocket, where the males are 16 to 17, you know, right below 17 inches, 16, 16 and a half, the females 15 and a half, a lot bigger dog. Um, you know, when I started breeding, I had many different types of dogs, and I think that later on, 20 years later, I see that I wasted a lot of time which I'm, I'm cautious to say wasted because I learned a lot from it, but I had big dogs. I had XLs. I had tiny pockets. I had a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If I would change anything, all of those resources would have, when I started out, I would have decided what type of dog I really wanted and focused to only get dogs that fitted that format. You know, years later, now I'm at that point to where I literally, over the last year, I cleared out about 20 dogs and I focused on the, the few dogs that I really, really fit my vision and fit my own personal standard. You know, uh, I'm being a lot more selective, a lot more choosy at this point in time. I don't breed dogs anymore that have flaws that I don't like. And uh, early in the process, you had to use some dogs that have flaws like a kink tail or a bite that you might not have liked. But at this point, you know, our um, program has graduated to the point where we feel like we don't need to do that. We're tightening up our selection. We're tightening up our requirements. Right now, our requirements and our expectations for what we want out of our males that we have is, excuse me, we want our males to be sort of like Mandela in the 100-pound area, 16 to 17 inches. We would prefer that the dog reaches closer to 110 pounds, uh, 25 to 26, 26 and a half inch head, short back, straight legs, tight feet, even though they might be bigger because you have you producing a dog that's probably going to be a lot bigger features anyway you know and great confirmation you know um, a lot of the experimental breedings you know I had dogs that were 13 inches I had some dogs that were 21 inches you know uh, I have a lot of mixed up blood right now what I'm doing is I have a select amount of studs you know which includes uh, Mufasa, Pumbaa, um, Sway, uh, of course Mandela you know, I've always had Denzel there, you know, um, Honey Badger. But these dogs have a lot in common, and they have a lot of in common as far as blood strand goes. I've added some Remy blood by way of the females. When you see it on paper, it's very, very precise, and it's very, very, like, no nonsense. Even though I like some other dogs, there's no dogs that I really am trying to add to my program. I want to make it very specific so that I have this group of dogs that I highly approve of and I can perfect the looks that they all bring to the table to make one consistent dog. I mean, when I say consistent, I really, in the next 10 years, I want people to be able to come to my yard and every one of my females is within 10 pounds of each other and within one inch of each other. And the same thing that goes for the males. I want their facial features to resemble each other strong. I want their, you know, everything about them. It's almost like to the point where I'm producing clones. Once I get to that point, and I do have a lot of dogs that are closing in on that point, but once I do that, then I feel like I'm close to a line. We feel like we've achieved something because, in my opinion, you don't have a line until you can tell people exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it, and you have a specific look, and it's built in. And what I mean by built in is it's generation after generation of this same look being produced. Then you have a line because your line is producing exactly what you wrote out for your line to be. A, a dog's uh, line is just like a standard. If somebody says that they have a line, they should be able to explain to you what's the look of their line, what's the height requirements, what's everything with this line. It's just like writing any other standard. And then their line produces that look and those requirements that they say. That's a good line. 
people consider themselves having a line because they've bred a long time. If you bred a long time and you have multiple different looks and you've never really accomplished anything, then you know what I mean? It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And um, that would be my biggest change is that I would be more directed towards something precise instead of just, I guess I was just sort of, you know, just backyard breeding and breeding whatever. If I like the two dogs, let's see what they make. Let's see what they make. Now, that will be my biggest change to be precise and to have a goal and to know exactly what I want. And even in the breedings that I'm doing now, if, you know, I do a breeding and a dog comes out that's obviously going to be an XL or obviously going to be too short, even though it might be a beautiful dog and work for somebody else in my program, it won't work. I need the dog that's going to fit exactly what I want and continue to do this generation after generation. So when you call us, we can tell you this is what you'll be getting because his genetics is built for this now for four or five generations. His granddaddy was this size, you know, his, his daddy was that size and his daddy was that size and had these same features. So it's a very high percentage of a chance that this is what you get. I mean, think of a Doberman, you know, when you get a Doberman, generally it looks like a Doberman <laughs> in one form of another, you know, but it's never a big variation. And that's what I'm trying to get to. So hopefully that answered the question and uh, we'll see, brother. Hopefully I'll make it that far. God bless. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.